following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to uh, Seam in Dallas. Hi, Tom. I love your show. Uh, Thank you so I've been much. I've listening to you since 2001 from my Seattle days when you were on a little station there. I appreciate you growling and prowling with us out here, man. <laughs> Thank you. Well, listen, thanks for bringing us from Seattle to Dallas, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. I love uh, all the hosts. I love your show. I'm addicted to it. That's Hotel California. It's wicked, isn't it, man? <laughs> thanks. Right, Tom. Nice okay, to talk man. to you. Have a great one. Right. Have a safe one. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the August 4th, terrific Thursday edition of the Tom O'Brien Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, filling in for Tom. And what I do know, folks, is that we should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And, of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go look at the circumstance of these markets, what the buyers and the sellers, what the bulls and the bears are communicating to you and I just past 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to call in. Now is not too soon. 877-927-6648. Of course, internationally, you can call us at 727-445-1044. We would love to hear from you. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes, and welcome to the show. Rawr! That's the uh, roar of a lion out there. We've got a flat market out here. We've got the Dow down about 16 points. S&P is uh, totally flat, trading at 2163. The NASDAQ composite is up about seven points. Russell 2000 up two. What I want to first start off with and give you guys is the numbers to be paying attention to. So here is exactly what the uh, markets are doing. We're going to look at the uh, futures contracts first. And when it comes to the ES mini, and the reason we're looking at the futures contracts versus going to the indices and the ETFs is because this is where I get the better information. And I want to give you the good information out here as well. And what we can see here, we take a look at the ES mini. I'm going to put the daily contract up on my chart. And really, since the uh, July 15th time frame, the market has been moving sideways. Now, moving sideways, light volume, oftentimes referred to as distribution. That means that you could or should prepare for a market to move to the downside. But if that's the case, what the ES Mini is going to have to do, it's going to have to break through a level of support. Now, that level of support right now is priced out at 2152. That's the number that I want you to pay attention to. It doesn't matter that it's an intraday spike. It would actually be a close below 2152. Likewise, to the upside, the ES Mini needs to close above 2169.50. Either side, where we see a close above, that's going to tell us where price is going to, or at least what direction price is going to head to next. Because right now, we are in nothing more than just this sideways summertime trading uh, range out here. Now, during the next segment, I think it's probably during the next segment, I will give you the bigger picture. But I want to give you the smaller term picture, at least daily chart, as to what's going on. Then I'll give you the bigger picture so that you and I can anticipate where price is going to go to. We're going to take a look at both sides of the trade and what to expect. Now, with regard to the NASDAQ futures, NASDAQ futures have not been trading sideways. They have basically been steadily uh, moving to the uh, upside. They have garnered some strength at one point in time towards that June 24th, 5th, 6th bottom out there. Uh, they were a weak see, And then they started to really roar their heads out here. And at this stage, in order for the NASDAQ to continue higher, right, so after the release of you had Facebook and Google and Amazon and Apple out here. In order for the NASDAQ to continue to move higher, they need to bust above 4747. So it's like flying a 747 out here, but you've got to add the four to the beginning of it. A break above that says that price goes higher. I know you might want to say, well, where's price going to go, you know, projection-wise? Well, let's not focus on that. Let's instead just focus on the containment zone that price is within. So 4747. Right now, by the way, it's trading out at 47.40, so you're only four points away. A close above 47.47 offers you and I the promise of higher price. Now, to the downside, the number you're looking at is 46.41. 
We're just going to call 4641 even. With regard to the Dow futures, and the Dow has been the weakest indice out here. And what we can see is you will see that it is trading. Now, these numbers that I'm giving you, in this case here, most of these have been our TAS market profiles. I utilize all the systems from all the great hosts and others, certainly all the great hosts here at TFN. And why wouldn't I use the same systems that each of us go ahead and share with you out here? So in this case, we've got John Logan, who provides us with these wonderful levels of horizontal support and resistance. It is especially helpful when we are trading the futures contracts. Now, with regard to the Dow, the Dow has been the weak link out here. And in order for the Dow to garner some strength, you're going to need to see a close in the futures contract above 17,358. So far, that in essence has acted as resistance. Now, the high today was 17,755. That is, is that, no, what the heck am I talking about? The high today, where the heck did that come from? The high today, maybe I gave you the, the wrong numbers out here. Let me start again. In order for the Dow futures to really get some momentum, they have to close above 18,349. I hope that's the number I gave you. And if it isn't, trash the other number. The actual high today in the Dow futures, 18,336. So just a few points away from really testing that. That is still resistance out here. If you see, you, you wake up tomorrow and price is trading. Now, we're looking for a close. So trading above it doesn't just necessarily do it. But if it is closed, if it is trading above 18,349, that's an important message for you. Now, with regard to the Russell 2000 out here, the Russell 2000, it's resistance zone. Now, I've got a 10-minute delay on that. So I don't believe it's trading above it right now. But the number is 121,534. The Russell has all of a sudden woken up. It's actually kind of the strong link out here. Now, markets that head south usually have the Russell 2000 leading the way on the way down. It is not doing that. In fact, the Russell 2000 formed a nice little daily market profile out here back on July 28th, so at the end of the month, and it formed at a little bit higher level. Now, where that resistance is that I gave you at 1215.34, that is a very significant resistance zone. If you break above that, that is really a very bullish message out here. That's not where the swing point high is. The swing point high came in about three or four days ago, and that's up at the level of about 1224.80. So that's with regard to our markets, the general markets. Now, back to some of the other things that you like to pay attention let's take a look at uh, gold and silver and light sweet crude out here as we take a look at uh, gold gold right now the resistance zone on gold is it really needs to get above 1374.20 right now it's trading out at uh, 1367.40 to the downside it's 1347.80 is the number that you're going to pay attention to you get below that then you're looking at maybe 1295. If you get above that price point of 1374, then you're going to come back and test the most recent highs, and that's out at the 1383 level. If we take a look at the numbers for silver, silver trading out at 2443. The number up for resistance inside of silver is going to be the price point of $20.68. That may be resistance. If it gets above that, then you'll see a move to 21 and a quarter. Likewise, if you break 2024, that's going to set up a move to 1962, maybe even 1855. Light sweet crude. Light sweet crude trading out at 4181. The real number to be paying attention to in light sweet crude. And this has a nice bullish message. And that's with a close today above the price point of 4159. Things look mighty fine in Texas T. Black gold. 4333 is the next stop for light sweet crude. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Filling in for Tom O'Brien. We'll be right back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. 
In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. The uh, Dow's off 18. S&P is uh, down about 50 cents. And let's go out to one of our better traders here with Inside TFNN, and that is John in Philly. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing this afternoon? Steve, I'm doing well. Thanks for doing double duty today, uh, TFNN Hi. and all us uh, participants. Appreciate that. My, our, my pleasure, our pleasure, and uh, we appreciate uh, we appreciate everything that you do. You provide the uh, our Tigers Den with just extraordinary information and uh, trades, live trades, and so forth. So, uh, really, hats off to uh, you. Now, I know one of the things that you want to take a look at is the S and P Oil and Gas Exploration ETF, which is the XOP. Uh, why don't you tell the folks what you're what you're doing, what you're looking at, and how I can help you? Steve, I wanted to ask you, that, well, very specifically, XOP, that is an ETF. Uh, it's a spider's ETF. What I like about this ETF, there are uh, a multitude of names from Exxon Shell uh, to um, oh, uh, Pioneer and EOG Resources, mm -hmm. and none of them has more than a weighting of 4%, so it's very well diversified. So if you just want to see where, where the big money is flowing either into or out of the, uh, the energy producing names, this is an excellent vehicle. Um, That's great. David, That's great no, information. That's great information. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah, and uh, further, this, uh, this particular security, double bottom this year down at 22, exactly at the 2008-9 bottom, and now it's rallied up a bit. Actually, it rallied from um, 22 to 38, up 16 bucks. Mm -hmm. And now uh, XOP has been in a tight trading range from 37 and 38 down to 32 for 15 weeks now. My question, uh, can you see the scenario, and do you think it's likely, that another $16 rally phase targeting up towards 48 can be on the cusp of occurring now? I think the answer to your question is yes. Let's go take a look at the reasons why. First, folks, what John was talking about was this little sideways consolidation that it has been in, in essence, since about, we'll call it April, the uh, middle of April. Now, with regard to where things are trading right now, and I'll switch over and take a look at a weekly chart, but on this daily chart for XOP, uh, we have both our daily and weekly profiles, and they are acting, the weekly profile specifically, is really acting as a great level of support from a zone, which is 
priced out at uh, 3272 so as long as it holds that level uh, that's a positive the resistance area that it needs to break out of is about 3643 now it's got a swing point that's higher than that on uh, June the 8th which has volume of about 15 million shares so clearing that high which is 3828 will then go a long way to giving you that breakout that you're looking for but you know the first thing is getting about 3643 closing about 3643 and making sure that it doesn't move down below 3272 now the reason that I said yes and what John did was he shared with us you know the weighting inside of the ETF structures is so important to understand and so the nice thing that he gave to us was that there's not a weighting inside there that's more than four percent versus the XLE where Exxon Mobil I don't know the number off the top of my head do you John but maybe it's like 15 16 or 20 percent or more than that 30 30 30 percent so folks if you trade the XLE you're really trading you know Exxon Mobil Chevron Schlumberger those are at least the top three uh, of the top five here whereas at least here you've got a more equal weighted ETF now the bottom panel of the screen that we're taking a look at is light sweet crude and so we can see that there is a directional correlation between these two that then takes us back to what is light sweet crude doing and just as we were going into the uh, breakout there, Light Sweet Crude yesterday formed a nice bottoming pattern at the completion of, a, I believe it was a 1 to 2 A to B equals CD down pattern. And if we take a look at that, that's where it made a high back here on the trading day of uh, June 9th, makes a uh, move down to June 17th, makes a little retracement, and a 1 to 2, almost a perfect, the actual price projection was 39.70. But yesterday was a wonderful bullish engulfing bull sash key reversal session which often is the uh, sign of a change in trend out here so that says okay light sweet crude has put in a bottom or should be putting in a bottom the reason why I say has put in a bottom as long as light sweet crude trades above what I refer to as the oscillator on change line uh, and that is priced out at um, right around 4158 right now uh, that says that the uh, that price now has the ability to move higher and um, and I expect that next move to be about 4333 and if light sweet crew can take that out then that bodes well for the XOP so uh, everything looks good for the trade setup that you're looking at inside of XOP any questions um, you know with the information I provided to you that um, that you need some more information on would you uh, kindly uh, thank you we're looking at that in the Tigers and would you throw up the volume on just that weekly chart on the XOP just so we can uh, have a quick look at what the volume is at the highs of XOP back at that April and early June time frame to see what benchmarks we uh, are dealing with. No, absolutely. So if we take a look at this, uh, the high, the, the, the volume at which level? Where, where are you looking for that on the weekly chart? I'm wondering about the highs of April and June. In April and June. So the oh, highs in... No, 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 uh, this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So really what we're dealing with, let's say June, uh, 40, uh, 70 million shares. You're at 65 million already. It's not traded. Well, let's see if it's traded into that swing point. So the actual swing point I'm looking at here uh, began the week of June 6th. The low is 35.12. The high so far has been 35.12. How about that, right? So you'd like to see a close inside 35.12 this month because it looks like, because it's definitely going to have the volume. Oh, that's a weekly chart. Sure. Well, uh, that's, a, right, that's a weekly right, chart. I was right. thinking monthly. Okay, so hold on, hold on. Still, it's got volume. So it's pushing into that swing point, you know, which that would suggest uh, if it can close inside 35.12, then it moved to 38.28. But it really, with Light Sweet Crude doing what it appears to be doing, it does look like this is a good trade setup. Steve, oh, I, uh, I appreciate it. Um, I will uh, get very excited about this if we clear that 38 and change level with the volume on that weekly uh and maybe we can get 48 out of it who knows yeah sounds great hey john thanks. thanks so much for calling thanks so much for sharing that was john in philly and folks as we do every thursday here at tfnn we spend some time with our man andy hecht and i apologize for a little delay out there but uh andy heck how the heck are you i'm good how you doing steve I am uh, doing uh, very well. Now, uh, do you have some charts that are uh, posted here? I don't see it for some reason. I know, normally you come. right now. Hey, I'm perfect, perfect. So what right. would you like, you know, you heard John and I talking about light sweet crude. Any any thoughts there from uh, anything that you're looking at in the yes, Texas uh, team? The yeah. crude oil market is still well oversupplied. Uh, however, um, what we've seen, and I was talking to Tom about this last week as we were heading lower, is we saw a turn 
in the gasoline crack spread, which moved from 1170 a barrel up to 15, over 15. Okay. And that actually uh, told me that crude oil was approaching a bottom here. But I'm not going to get too excited about crude oil. My range still in crude oil is uh, 38 and a half up to roughly $45 a barrel. I think we can recover to $45 a barrel here. But um, there's, you know, rig counts have been going up in the yeah. United States and North America. And uh, I don't think we're going back to 50 bucks on this move. Now, the one thing that I do think can fuel uh, higher crude oil here is the rising open interest, which tells me that there are more shorts in the market right now. Got it, got it. Hey, uh, Andy, do me a favor and hold on through this break sure. here. and We'll come back and we'll spend time with our man, Andy Heck. This is Steve Rhodes filling in for uh, Tom O'Brien. Uh, we'll be right back, folks. <laughs> Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC-insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank Bank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. <laughs> Welcome back to the Tom O'Brien Show, folks. I'm your guest host, Steve Rhodes, filling in for Tom while he's away for the afternoon. And uh, we've got our man, Mr. Andy Heck, on the uh, line. We were taking a look at Light Sweet Crude just as we were going into that break here. Andy's saying, hey, he can see Light Sweet Crude moving up into what the, about the 45, maybe 47 area, which would be uh, a nice 0 .618 retracement off of the high that was formed out here back on the uh, trading day of June 9th down to the low of a couple of days ago. So it certainly looks like 43.33 is a 
Saints' next target. Then 44-36 and 47-56 out there. Quick question, Andy. As uh, Light Sweet Crude was coming off that bottom back in January and made its run up to the uh, high on the June 8th, June 9th uh, area, was there just a lot more production that began coming online? Um, there were there were rumors. I mean, back back when it it came off. You mean uh, early last February, right? In the middle of February, yeah. When it came from, off twenty six oh five, and we started to rally. The, the yes. rally was really started by um, uh, talks between the Russians, the Saudis. <clears throat> the Qataris and the Venezuelans about the potential for a production freeze. Uh, that combined with. Um, you know, uh, uh, just just an overabundance of shorts uh, yeah. caused the market to rally there. Uh, one of the things that I had had me very bearish about crude when it was like like around you know forty eight to fifty recently was the fact that crack spreads were so weak, uh, mm -hmm. processing spreads, which means that either inventories of gasoline and heating oil were too high, or um, demand was low, or a bit of both. And that caused, you know, the, the, the washout down to uh, 30, 39, 19 that we saw yesterday. But sure. um, the, the pickup in crack spreads, I think, is important here. We're in the heart of driving season. I'd keep your eyes on the crack spreads here. I, I, I'm long a little bit of crude oil here, looking to take profits between 44 and 45. I'm looking to get short between 45 and 47. Okay, and 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 uh, since as long as we're in the oil or the gas area, how about natural gas? What's your take on yeah, today uh, natural was a, gas? Today was a wild day in natural gas, and not so much in terms of the price, but in terms yeah. of the inventories that came out. The uh, Energy Information Administration reported that you know this is the heart of uh, injection season, where where okay. uh, producers put more inventories into stockpiles, and today. We had a very oddball uh, withdrawal from inventories of six billion cubic feet. I mean, it's a small number, but it's significant in in that you know we very rarely. I can't remember the last time we got a withdrawal from inventories in the summer season. Now, natural gas was headed lower, but that stopped the downward momentum. It popped a little bit here. Uh, I'm surprised it's not a lot higher on that uh, uh, withdrawal number. So well, I think that's something got, to watch. We might yeah, see a delayed re effect here. Yeah, it's got it's got a nice uh, a resistance zone. If we just simply take a look at our market profile, so interestingly enough, at 284, um, that happens to be the uh, top of a resistance zone, typically where sellers are comfortable firing away, and that seems to have contained price. But if in fact it can get above that 284 level, you know, it ought to go visit, revisit the uh, most recent high from July 1st. Now, seasonally speaking, uh, is there a seasonal pattern in natural gas where it typically forms some type? of of high um, or, or do we have a ways do we have a way a, a, a period of time to go before uh, do you know is there any kind of seasonal aspect that you take a look sure. at? Sure uh, natural gas tends to peak in the winter season in December January February but we are in hurricane season and um, you know traditionally back if you look back at 2008 2005 you know we had those hurricanes in the Gulf Coast of Louisiana off of Louisiana Katrina yeah. and the other one and and um, basically Basically, you know, that affected natural gas infrastructure at the Henry Hub, which is the delivery point for NYMEX natural gas. Now, you know, the price went to 15 bucks one year, 13 bucks. We're never going to see those prices again because of the, you know, excess, the abundance of reserves we have now in the Marcellus and, Nat, uh, and Utica shale regions. However, natural gas also could be feeling the burn because you know one of the platforms of of uh, bernie sanders was very anti-fracking and the democrats have picked up uh some of those um uh, uh anti-fracking uh, uh things in their platform this year and that could limit the amount of um production in in the future so i think natural gas actually looks pretty good the reason that it has popped is it was too cheap the reason that inventory flows this year are way below last year steve last mm -hmm. year inventory flows into stockpiles were 43 percent above what they are this year so far during the injection season so i think that's a positive for natural gas could we get up to three bucks three and a half bucks absolutely could we get up to ten bucks absolutely not well as long as it clears uh, 284 folks you heard it from andy 
start looking for that uh, $3 range out there. What else are you looking at uh, commodity-wise? Well, uh, precious in the, uh, metals, baby. Okay. I, I, I will tell you that I think that the action in the silver-gold ratio and the platinum-gold spread over the last month has been highly bullish for this sector. I mean, if you look at all asset classes, Steve, gold, silver, platinum have really done the best this year. Yeah. And the problem is you're running into some resistance close by in gold at around 1428 first 1398 then 1428 silver resistance is far above uh, about $25 an ounce I put it at but silver is you know the silver bulls are a lot more resilient than the gold bulls here open interest has stayed at all-time highs for quite some time now so I continue to be bullish on these markets but that doesn't mean we can't get a vicious pullback here the 50% retracement levels of the moves you know in gold it's 12 12 like 150 bucks below the sure, current price sure. in in silver it's 1750 so you know almost three dollars below in platinum it's a thousand a hundred and sixty five dollars below in palladium it's 588 you know also you know a hundred and twenty dollars below so I expect a bumpy road, but I expect higher highs and higher lows because in my career since 1980, I have never seen a political and economic landscape that is more fundamentally positive for precious metals. So I expect them to keep going higher, but it's going to be a rocky road. Fundamentally because of what? Fundamentally, because of low interest rates, the Bank of England Got again it. today yep, yep, cut yep, yep. interest rates. That cuts the cost of carry. You know, money is looking for homes. It's going into a stock market that is trading at a P.E. ratio that is historically very high. Bond prices, I don't have to tell you, are, you know, ridiculously sky high. I think Leon Cooperman said that buying bonds in this environment is like picking up pennies in front of a steamroller. So we we you know gold and silver uh, the main two precious metals offer an alternative they offer capital growth because anyone who's been in them since last december has made a lot of money and it is sure. drawing money in money is drawing money in returns are drawing money in and you know look the gold traded up to 1920 in uh, 2011. I think we're on the road to um, higher highs and higher lows in these metals, but only buy on dips. Try not to buy rallies in these markets. It, 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 makes, it, it makes for lots of aggravation. Folks, those are words of advice from a sage person out here. Hey, Andy, as always, uh, great uh, spending uh, time with you. Uh, thanks for uh, staying on through that additional segment. And uh, uh, what do you have planned for your show? Well, today on my show, we're going to go through all the commodities. We're going to talk a little bit about all of them. But a um, couple of things to point out for the wider audience. Coffee, bullish key reversal today. So, hey, you know, there you go. On so, that one. so, folks, uh, make sure you have your uh, your Java sitting on your uh, on your desk while Andy goes through coffee with Andy. Great spending time with you, and uh, have care, a great Steve. show Thanks this afternoon. You bet. This is Steve Rhodes with uh, TFN, obviously, filling in for Tom O'Brien. Dow's off four. S&P is uh, flat, trading at 2164. We'll be right TFNN back. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry. Powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund is currently offering four-year first mortgages on many of the fully renovated properties that it has purchased. The first mortgages are third-party appraised with a maximum loan-to-value ratio of 70%, providing a secured investment that pays a fixed return of 5% annually, which works out to a monthly income of more than $416 per $100,000 investment with your principal intact and secured. 
These four-year first mortgages are perfect for anyone looking for a secured investment that provides monthly income much like a CD. For more information, email tigerfund at tfnn.com or click on the Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund banner along the right side of the tfnn.com homepage or call our office directly at 877-518-9190. There's a limited supply, so act now. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Tom O'Brien. Welcome back to the Tom O'Brien Show, folks. I'm your guest host, Steve Rhodes, filling in for Tom for the uh, afternoon. Uh, most of you know that I do the uh, show now from uh, 1 to uh, 2 and uh, utilize a whole series of different tools to be able to uh, call the markets. Now, one of the tools that is really the foundation for, you know, Tom likes to say the market will squawk, walk, and talk, and he's really taking a look at uh, swing points. And I actually believe that it's talking to us all the time. And when it talks to us, what it's doing, it's forming Japanese candlesticks. Now, some days when it's speaking to you and I, it's not generating any kind of a signal, but there are other days. You heard Andy talk about a key reversal day inside of uh, call. We took a look at yesterday's bullish engulfing and key reversal session inside of Light Sweet Crude. And those um, signals mean something. They mean a lot to us. Now, many people haven't spent the time yet to either learn Japanese candlesticks or, or if you go pick up a lot of materials out there, it's going to inundate you with a lot of minutia, a lot of information that you really don't need to know. Now, next Wednesday, a week from yesterday, I'm going to be hosting a, a workshop, a one-hour workshop. And during that one hour, I'm going to give you the absolute best the best and everything that you need to focus on in order to be able to master the message of the markets. And it's very easy to attend. Just come on over to the homepage at tfn.com, sign up for it. Normally, my newsletter service, which is called Mastering Probability, you got to pay $149 for it. We've made the uh, special first month offer at $49 for the first month, and you're going to get a class that is amazing. Now, what I want to do is I want to give you, it almost sounded like Trump when I said it was amazing, right? But truly, it is going to be amazing out here. Uh, this much I can assure you. But what I want to do right now is I want to spend some time to give you the bigger picture of the markets. Because I believe that if I give you the bigger picture, I'm going to teach you some things that maybe you didn't realize about the markets. Because for many people, the idea is you always hear you want to be able to uh, buy at the lows and sell at the highs, right? But when markets are moving down, uh, Andy was saying, hey, you want don't buy gold and chase it now. Buy it on some type of retracement. But the question is, when? As you start to see something pull back, that's when all of a sudden the fear starts to kick in. And how do you overcome the fear that's associated with putting money at risk? Well, the way that you do that is you read and you understand the message of the markets out here. So let's first start off with what do the markets typically do? And when I say what do the markets typically do, I'm referring to over the last 84 years, what is the normal cycle? If you just learn this or you pass this on to your kids, they wouldn't have to understand anything about the markets, but this would help them to understand when to put money in or when not to put money in. Now, what the markets will do on an annual basis, what they typically do, does it do this all the time? No, but it does it enough where you want to pay attention to it. And that is after the after the Santa Claus rally, could be the end of December, might be the first few days in January, maybe it's the first week, all of a sudden the market pulls back. The market forms a bottom around the end of January or early February. 
How will you know? Well, you'll know. Well, I'll show you some of the patterns out here. You really need to understand your Japanese candlesticks. When the market's pulling back, you need to understand a half a dozen bullish reversal signals out there. Then the market moves higher into May, right? We've all heard sell in May. Is that really the time that you sell? Well, not necessarily. But the market does form a short-term top right around the middle of May. And then the markets will actually move lower. They, they, there's really in, in the uh, June time frame, I don't have a mark here. Hopefully you're watching this on uh, Tiger TV out here. But right around the uh, middle of June is when all of a sudden the market starts to pull back. You start to see it pull back. And it makes a nice bottom the uh, beginning of July, the end of June. Now, this year here, and we have all kinds of events. This year it happened to be Brexit, right? It happened to be Brexit. People started freaking out. It was fear, you know, fear. But that's when, if you want to buy at lows, then you need to understand patterns, and you certainly want to understand Japanese candlesticks. So if you are a trader, if you're an investor, uh, you're deciding when to put money to work and when not, there's no reason for you to have missed that rally off of the June bottom out here. Now, what typically happens on an annual basis, and this is the Dow that we're looking at, by the way, it moves higher into the last week of July, July 20th, specifically with regard to 2016. So far, the high inside the Dow has been July 20th, 2016. If the market is to follow the annual seasonal cycle, and I don't know if it will. I'm going to show you something that says maybe it won't. But if it is to follow the annual seasonal cycle, what you should anticipate is the markets are going to move down. We're not going to pay attention to the exact number. We just know that they will move lower into the middle of October. Now, you're going to see, and this is a beautiful market for them to do that because you've got everybody selling fear on just about every channel, blaming one candidate or the other. So there's enough blame to go around to start to push the market lower. One party is going to say, if this person is elected, it's going to just crash the markets or what have you. You know, but I can tell you those people, the big money people that might be pushing that story, they know this. They know that the time to then come in and buy the market is going to be the middle of October. Sometimes it's the end of September. So we don't use these. We use this as a guideline, not as exact, because we know what the market does on average, on a tendency. And what you and I do is we sit there and we get ready to take action. So this is what the market does on an annual basis. You might say, well, prove it to me. Okay, let's just take a look at Let's do this here. Let's take a look at just a blank chart. Remember, we're talking about markets moving down into the uh, January time frame. So here is the uh, bottom that formed January 21st. And then there was a retest of that the uh, middle of uh, February, February 11th. Now, there's some bullish reversal signals. I'm not going to show you what they are at this uh, moment, but that's what the market does. Here is the market moving higher into the April-May time frame. Starts to pull back. But here is that June 28th bottom. Move, market moves higher into end. This trading session right here, July 20th. Now that's just 2016. You might say, ah, Steve, you know, you're just, you just from what that, what kind of sample size is that? Well, let's just go back to the prior year out here. Let's take a look at October in 2015. It was really September 30th, right? First, the market went down. Remember, it was the what was? I think that was the Asian contagion, if I'm not mistaken, August 24th of 2015. By the way, the actual high before that whole contagion formed out here happened to be July 20th. Did it make a higher high in May? Yes, part of that sell in May. But you see, the market came back and towards the middle uh, end of January, uh, July, which happened to be July 20th, the market went ahead and started moving lower. But it was right back here when you had a nice little bullish reversal signal back on September. It was really on October 1st when that signal came in. This is what the markets typically do. We just took a look at a July date. We just took a look at a uh, September, October date out here. And by the way, in uh, January, when the markets did their normal pullback, it was February 3rd that the market found a nice bottom in the marketplace. That's 2015. But let's not stop there because, because there is more. Right here's 2014. In 2014, wasn't it the uh, Russian was shooting down uh, planes in Ukraine, or maybe they said they didn't, but there was, you remember, and, and I think we had Ebola. Wasn't that in 2014? Was it 2014 or 2013? It was the Ebola scare. But yet right here on the trading session of October 20th, that's when you get your bullish reversal signal. You want to make sure that you understand your Japanese candlesticks because that is going to be the trigger during these time periods where you're going to want to make sure that you put your money to work. Now, that's what typically happens on an annual basis inside the market. We can go back year after year after year, and you will see these patterns play out. But this year is a little bit different. What's different this year is we actually have a presidential cycle. And sometimes that presidential cycle can kick in. 
and that presidential cycle specifically with regard to a second term president. And yes, because it didn't start, we didn't start having two term limits until I believe it was signed in 1951. We have a limited number of second term presidents, but they are worth noting. Why? Because the market forms a bottom in the early part of August and moves higher through September. Let's go take a look at what the message of the markets are right now and what they may be signaling to both you and I. But here's one thing for sure. Both patterns form a bottom in October. So come on over to the homepage of TFN.com, sign up for my workshop, get my newsletter service, because I will teach you things that will be in your arsenal for the rest of your life. This is Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. The uh, flat market's out here. The Dow's off three. S and P is up seventy cents. The uh, Russell's up a uh, is up a buck out here. So, so it's really worthwhile for us to spend some time on this because you know there are things that look. I, it's uh, you'll hear people regurgitate a bunch of uh, stuff out there, and they don't really know what they're talking about. I'm not talking within TFNN. I'm talking about on the boob tube out here, and uh, you know, in, in the whole politics thing. I want you to be able to take advantage of this because the likelihood of the market making a bottom in October at some point. In time Time, you know, the thought process that because of one political party or the other, you know, the market is not liking it and, you know, it's going to be moving lower. Are you kidding me? The market moves lower into October. The question is, are we going to see a nice bounce between now, the beginning of August through the first week in September before the market moves lower? Or have we just started that move lower? Um, but what I want you to make sure that you are 
uh, being able to do is buy that fear. I want you to buy those lows out there. I don't want you to be afraid of it, but I want you to understand what it is that you're looking for. And Japanese candlesticks are going to be one of the tools because you want to understand what other patterns are out there to allow you to be able to do that. Now, if we take a look at, um, if we take a look at, well, now here's which which of these two patterns is likely to play out here. Well, yesterday. Yesterday's session inside the Dow futures is very subtle, but yet very important. It actually formed a nice little hammer candle out here. So yesterday's low is really important, 18188. If that gets taken out, we see a close below that, and then price moves to 17923 and then moves below that. I can tell you that the seasonal cycle, the annual seasonal cycle, is the prevailing pattern that's out here and says that that normal high that comes in at the end of July is in and the markets move lower. Likewise, that may have given us a nice bottoming signal yesterday yesterday because there are other really important aspects about what the market is doing right now. For example, I want to show you if we take a look at the uh, Dow, this is a monthly chart. And what I want to do is I want to come back and take a look at the Dow from the period of about 1997. So if you're watching us on Tiger TV, from 1997 through September of 2006, it was trading in a 4,000 point consolidation range. Now, the beauty of the consolidation pattern is that when price breaks either to the upside or the downside, we have a measured move. The way that this plays out technically is you should see a move equal to or greater than a consolidation when that level gets broken. Now, that says that we should have seen price get up to about 15,500 inside of the Dow. We didn't see that because in October of 2007, price got up to a high of 14,198. 14,198 versus 15,500. So about a 1,400 point difference out here. What typically happens, what you want to watch is you want to see, does price come back and just test the top of the consolidation pattern, which is this red line going across my screen right around the 11,500 figure, so right around there, or... And if it tests it and it rejects it, then you might be in another consolidation, but price is not back into the lower range. Sometimes you hear us talk about lower range. Well, guess what? In 2007, it was really 2008, September of 2008, when price decisively closed back inside that original consolidation. And where did price head to? heads all the way back down to the bottom of the consolidation. Went slightly lower than that, but in essence to the bottom of that consolidation. That's what you expect to see when you have a failed breakout pattern. So where does that take us to right now? Well, where that takes us to right now is that, first of all, what I want you to notice is that old 15,500-ish area, which eventually we saw price get up there, in essence, the top of that second consolidation, guess what? That now has become the level of support for the Adal. That's the level of support. And guess what? Price is now broken out of a consolidation pattern. And that consolidation says we should see about the 21,000 level get hit inside of the Dow. So as long as price stays above this consolidation, which is what we call it, about 18,200, that's how prices can move higher through September. So, folks, uh, hopefully um, uh, you'll be able to take this information that we just shared with you during this last half hour. Use it to your benefit. Of course, the easiest way to do that. Come on over to the homepage at TFNN.com. Go sign up for my workshop. It'll be the best $49 investment that you could make, I promise you. Stay tuned. Our man Basil Chapman is filling in for Hour 2 for Tom O'Brien. Have a, a great afternoon. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Take care, folks. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Let's go to Mike in Wilmington. Hey, Mike, what's going on? Hey, Tommy. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great, man. Yourself? Good, man. Yeah, good. Yeah, I'm calling to give you a compliment because I just want your listeners to know that you are on your game right now. I've been listening to you for a lot of years, Tom. And you are on your game. And I'll tell you, I'll never forget you calling King Dollar back when it was in the 70s. You saying it was going here and everybody couldn't even believe that it could even dream that it was ever going to go back to the 90s. I appreciate the feedback, man. All right, pal. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Hi everyone, Basil Chapman sitting in for Tom O'Brien on the Tom O'Brien Show. My pleasure to be here. Honored to be able to uh, take the uh, to be a guest host. So let's look at the marketplace, and we're looking at a Dow. Let me just uh, run the numbers. The Dow is down 
three points at 18,352. If you're looking at the charts on Tiger TV, on the left, you'll see a daily chart of the Dow. In the middle, you'll see the weekly chart with the Chapman Wave notation. And on the right, you will see the monthly chart. Let me explain what's going on. The Dow was down three. So it's basically a 0% change day. We've gone down four troughs, and yet we've taken 10, 11 sessions to go down 340 points or so. Um, that's, that's nothing. So the jobs number tomorrow will give incentive to the market to do something different, to start a bigger move than this very small move we've had. As we go through these charts, you'll see why I'm going to explain to you uh, what's so important about certain levels. Certainly on the Dow, a close below 18,200. We close at 18,352. So 300, closing three, more than 350 points lower, you will start to see a deeper correction take hold. If, in fact, there's just a small little pullback, or, in fact, if there's a breakout and this this channel type action that we've seen where there's a steady move to the downside but nothing out of the ordinary just a series of slightly higher highs and slightly lower lows essentially says that this pattern at a certain point just runs out of patience and has a sudden spike to the upside if that occurs if the Dow is up 130 points or so tomorrow, if it's starting to get to the high 18,400s, that's going to be very positive act action on the short term. So here are the parameters. A Dow up 100, 100 points, let's call it 100 points, up 100 points tomorrow. I would say that's very positive and we will go into a positive attitude for next week. Doesn't have to be fantastic, but just higher highs and higher lows. If there's a reversal, and then you'll see that the arch formation kicks in, and tomorrow we're down 100 points at the close, that impacts the weekly chart, which is at a peak D, and the monthly chart is still very positive. I just want to explain this real quickly so that I can do the charts with you. If you're looking at the charts, you'll see this is what I show my subscribers to my opening call. That's my daily newsletter, very comprehensive letter. It goes out every morning by 8.35. You've got your 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 charts, whatever it is, uh, to explain exactly what we're looking at and our positions that we have. So when a price comes down and forms what I call an identifiable low and starts to move higher, the series of higher highs and higher peaks are labeled very simply peak A. When the price pulls back and it goes one penny above peak A, it becomes leg B. When it turns around, it becomes peak B and so on until you get to D. At D, that is where you can expect other things to happen. It could recycle up. It could break down completely. That's a very important moment. That The reason why I wanted to take a moment to explain that is we're at a D already in the Dow, and there hasn't yet been a big deterioration in the technicals. It's still holding extremely well. The missing link out of all these uh, charts is that the New York Stock Exchange didn't get to a D, and the Dow didn't get to a D, and we always expect a D before we can get a deeper pullback, you know, before we can anticipate a, a deeper pullback. And now look at the S&P, the SPX.X, that's the S&P 500, is at 2164.25, up 46 cents. Um, that's like an unchanged as well. It's like a 0% change. The 0% change goes really well with a, a price move in the Dow of up 100 or down 100. In the, in the um, S&P, it would be up 12 points or down 12 points. If that's either one of those tomorrow, will set the stage for next week. But 2147 is key support on the S&P. A break of 2147, not even a close, but a break below is very negative. And a push above says that the 2178.29 high that was made all time high of peak D, remember the D that we were talking about? That'll say, save the day and we can now meander and start to move slightly higher. I'm not expecting a huge up move, but higher rather than lower. And that's how simple the technique is at this particular point. And leg D, a 20.3% gain in the S&P weekly chart from not the August low. In this case, it was the February low of 810. Spectacular move. You can expect that there should be some kind of a, a consolidation coming up very soon. And I do anticipate it'll be, it will be very soon. So S&P 500 monthly chart has broken out. It's looking very strong. I, mean, I will have a webinar later on in August where I'm going to be dis discussing 
now that we've gone to all-time highs, what's the prognosis? And my prognosis is we will go, even with sharp pullbacks, we're going to go to higher highs. Look at the IWM. That's the Russell 2000. Russell 2000 pulled back from a peak E top. It was uh, uh, up 10 cents today at 120.55. Also holding really well. The technicals in all of these charts are starting to fail in the daily chart, which says that there can be a pop to the upside, but it might be limited. Okay, and we've got a, a leg D, maybe a peak D by tomorrow's close in the weekly chart, and the monthly chart has improved a lot. QQQ series, the QQQs right now are looking at peak D again at 116.13, up 39 sets at 115.73. A close below 114 says weakness, sell mode in the, da uh, the daily chart of the Qs, and that will pull back uh, quite sharply. But a break above 116.13 says, oh, save the day. We can start to move a little higher next week. This is a cusp. I usually don't talk about going up or down. I usually say we're going up or we're going down. In this case, these are the parameters that I have to watch. Look at the um, look at gold. Gold right now trading at 13.67 up 2.6. It needs to make its leg D above uh 1374.2 in the continuous contract and um so the parameters for gold is if it does that then it will tackle the high that was made on the 6th of july at 1385 and if it breaks down 1344 is going to be key support if you're looking at the dollar the dxy the dollar right now is at 95.75 a nice bounce but perhaps it's going to struggle unless it can close above 96.50 um, it might be struggling here for a little bit longer. And if you're looking at um, crude oil, CL crude oil had a nice bounce today at 41.78, up 95 cents. Um, my subscribers, we we went um, long a an ETN. This is a fund that has a mix of many of the commodities: gold, natural uh, gas, crude oil. Um, and uh, some of the commodities. And it's more just a starting position. I want to see, because until crude oil can break and hold above 4360, if it can do that, and if it can do that by Monday or Tuesday, that'll be a V-shaped recovery and very positive. If it starts to fail, it's going to retest the 39, uh, uh, 39, 18 low, and that's not going to be very good. This is a very important period for crude oil. Let's go to bonds, the TLT, the 20-year Lehman Fund, is trading at 139.47. Nice bounce. I just think it's in a range right now. We'll talk a little bit more about that when I get back. Basil Chapman sitting in for Tom O'Brien. Uh, and we'll be back. The Dow was down just three points. S&P was up 0.46. I'll be right back off these important messages. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. 
or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Tom, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman sitting for Tom O'Brien, and we're looking at a Dow that was uh, closed just down a tad at minus 2.95 at 18,352. The S&P closed up 0.46 at 2164. We're looking also at Rex, which is uh, Rex Space Hosting Inc. Uh, trading up 6.56 uh, at 2980, up 28 percent. Now, someone must have known something because just at the beginning of July, this is a stock that was trading under 20 at 19.84 that was at the on the 6th of july has a very strong move up leg a pulls back leg b pulls back a little bit and then it goes today it soared someone must have guessed that there was something going on because today already it went from the close of yesterday at 23.16 to a close at 26.55 now after hours is trading at 30 um, so how it could have moved so strongly intraday and then continued going, in other words, from 23 to 37 points, that's, that's, that is huge. So um, the weekly, remember we were talking about the leg D? There's your leg D. Remember we were talking about other things can happen at a peak D, the fourth highest peak. Look at the monthly from the low of, uh, let's see, 26, 18. Back in May of 2014, it went peak A, then a higher leg going to peak B, higher leg goes to C, higher leg goes to D, and D at 56.20 in April of 2015, a year later, kaplop, it goes all the way back down, it goes down to a low of $15.05, and that was just February of this year. What a move. Spectacular. Very nice. Congratulations. Thanks, uh, Dave White, for giving us some news in the den. Uh, oh, getting bought out. So not only did they have a spectacular day, now they're getting bought out. Oh, man, I tell you, that for anyone who was buying racks over the last couple of days, congratulations. KHC, what's KHC again? Usually I know these charts. Oh, the, of course I know Kraft Heinz Company um, trading up 362 at 88.58. Now that made a peak D and then it continued to an E. And that last high was at 90.26. It's trading right now at 88.52. Now, as an IPO, not really an IPO, Kraft has been around for decades. Heinz has been around for more than decades. Uh, we're talking about the two companies merging. And as a new company, they merged and they went to a low at, of 61.42 a high of 90, and now today they're trading at 88.52. Fabulous move. And I, I have to tell you, the foods, uh, not all, but many of the food sectors, the safety sector of food in this particular environment, I, actually that takes me to the next point that I wanted to, to talk about. We, we've seen stocks that, are, that are, normally do not have such huge PEs just ramp up. And one of the reasons is they give dividends, and they are, of course, safety products because everybody has to have food. If you go to a supermarket, though, you can't find... I'm actually always wondering, how do they make so much money where you can't just have three kinds of something anymore? You have to have the whole variety of flavors. In fact, plain, you can't find plain anything. Everything's flavored. Um, what do they do with the leftovers of all these things? Not everybody's going to like raspberry. Maybe they like strawberry or whatever it is. 
What do they do with all that excess stuff? I don't know, but the fact is that many of these companies are doing extremely well, and uh, Kraft uh, Heinz company has done extremely well, especially now that the two are together. So um, um, a company that is uh, was the focus at some point for a spectacular move up, which is Fire Eye Inc., um, it, it went, it was an IPO back in 2014, went from the 30s all the way to 97.35, 90, and then it came tumbling down to under, to, to about 10 something, 11.35. And it tried to bounce, it's had a sort of a flat arch formation, I call this a lowercase h in the weekly chart, that can go to an M pattern, lowercase m, and there it is, and today, came out with news earnings just a little while ago, uh, down 2.96 at 14.31, and was at 18.42 just the other day. It missed making that peak D. It's very unusual, but not when you get in this arch formation. So what I wanted to mention was, one of the reasons, let me go back to this Dow chart right now, I-N-D-U. One of the reasons why I've held to a more bullish posture for a little while now, even though there are so many charts in leg D or peak D in the weeklies who have gone to the dailies. Only the Dow look is, is at C. Look, the S&P went to a D. Uh, let me show you, SPX.X. Look, there it is, peak D. The IWM went to peak E, just one, one letter above, and then pulled back. The Qs went to the D. Uh, one, two, three, and then some of my favorite sectors, SMH, the, um, this is a semiconductor, the, SM, the market vector semiconductor ETF, went to an E, is pulled back, held the nine period moving average, that black line, but it's in an E in the weekly chart. So I, IBB, the, um, this is the biotech sector I shares, the IBB trading at 295 down two, gone to a leg E. Um, these are and the, the monthly chart went all the way to a peak D at 400.79 before plummeting to the to the uh, 240 level. So this is a reason why I'm very selective for my subscribers in going long. But we've, we've fortunately we've been lucky. Earnings have come out for the, some of the stocks we have, and they've been fabulous, and the stocks have moved up very sharply. But at the same time, it is very selective. And I, I think that that's part of this. We've had since the summer of 2010, the corrections have all been rotational. That's when I identified that if we have rotational corrections, we don't have to have those 20, 30 percent cor corrections that we normally would do after a very strong period. And what's happened is during market rotations, the market essentially has said, I'm taking a bit of a rest. But while I'm resting, the poor old biotechs that got slammed can have a fabulous move from 240 to 299, 20% uh, gain. The um, semiconductors, which had been really decimated at, at some point, they, they were down at the beginning, well, I think it was February. Yeah, February, they'd gone down to 45, retest the, the previous low from 2014. And then they went from, 45 to the most recent high of 65. Um, so that's a fantastic gain. So when I'm talking about rotational corrections, what I'm really saying is that we might find that even now in this very choppy market that I'm anticipating, we've already had some part of a choppy market, but this choppy market, we might find that prices actually hold a lot better than people would expect why? Because as the oils get slammed and you think, oh, they're going to go down forever, suddenly CVX finds a little bit of support and has a good bounce. And as it's bouncing, so you get your correction in the General Electric, which has pulled back from 32.95 to the 31 round number, low, recent low. And it's saying, hey, I, I'm, I'm, I, I've had a fantastic move. I've gone from 19 all the way to 32. I deserve a rest. And that's all I think it is for many of these stocks. So as I'm looking at the different sectors, I'm saying this is the time to be absolutely discriminate. You can, you can say, I don't like the sector, but you can like a particular stock. Or you can say, I love the sector, but they're a little bit overbought. I don't really know what to do now. Do I chase? Well, in some cases, chasing is not a bad thing if, in fact, you're looking at a market that has very, uh, a chart that has very strong technicals. So this is the period you want to be most selective. 
I'll, I'll further that thought in a moment. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, tomorrow's job report is going to give us a lot of information. And I'll explain about that in a moment and what I'd be looking for. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman sitting for Tom O'Brien. Dow was down a fraction. S&P was up almost 0%. 0.46. I'll be back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you, does me. Call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. It's 2016, and TFNN has a brand new programming lineup to kick things off. Starting January 4th, Swim Lessons by Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade will be airing five days a week at noon Eastern time. Join hosts Scott Connor, Kevin Hinks, and Cindy Faber as they host their daily options program live at noon five days a week with no commercials for the entire hour. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark will be moving their program, Living a Primal Lifestyle, to twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Wake up with Nico and Paige and start your day off right. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour by Nadex will now be live Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Start and end the week with the three hosts, Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien, and Daryl Martin as they break down the world of trading binary options and spreads. For all the details on the new 2016 programming lineup, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com hi everyone basil chapman sitting in for tom o'brien dow was down a fraction s p was up a fraction we're waiting for the jobs number tomorrow all right normally i would say that an economic news event or the fed event does not change a trend unless right at that very moment there is a there is there are enough technicals to suggest that a trend change could happen and that's something that i will discuss in a moment but what i wanted to say is uh, uh z is the symbol zillow group has just pulled back a dollar 54 down 3.94 percent to 37.50 after what remember we talked about this uh, a moment ago the pattern that I'm looking for in the Chapman wave, you identify the most important trough at the bottom and you peak count each successively higher peak. At a peak D, the fourth highest peak, other things can happen. This is what I do with my subscribers every day. We're looking at the charts in this particular manner. Well, lo and behold, Z, Zillow, went from the low that was made back in April, I believe. Yep, April of 2016, April the 11th, it went peak A, B, C, D. And it went from the 18-ish um, area to 29.70, round number low 28, and then it pulls back sharply. 
starts a brand new buy mode from that peak D and it goes A, B, C, D. It goes to, on the 23rd of June, it goes to 35.50, pulls back sharply at peak D, and then it goes A, B, C, D, and that D came in three days ago at 39.88, and lo and behold, it is down sharply. Is that the evidence right there? But look at the spectacular. This black line is the nine period exponential moving average. And you will see that Zillow's only once did it close underneath that nine period exponential moving average since it broke out on the 13th of April. Isn't that a beautiful technical tool that you can use? Look at that, that black line. I'll be discussing that as well in a webinar coming up uh, uh, mid-March, uh, mid-March, mid-August, uh, where I discuss this. And there's your peak D in the, in the daily. And look at the peak D potentially forming. If there's a lower high next week, all of next week, no new high above 39.88, be careful because Zillow will have made some kind of a top and could pull back from the 39 area to the test of 35 nine period exponential moving average but it's only in leg a in the monthly charts since it's an ipo and the other thing that i'm going to show you is this these are the buildings <clears throat> that are anticipated for the year 2020 the world's tallest building um i'm going to be talking about uh, this uh, coming up in this webinar that'll be posted on tfnn very within a day or two and you can see this is the world's tallest building to come this is not this is the kingdom tower in dubai that is above the clouds this is what you can see above the clouds it's incredible this happens in every period i'll talk about um elections and i'll talk about uh, three terms of a particular party, what happened in the 1920s, and skyscrapers like the Empire State. Let's go to Joe in, I think, New York. Joe, how are you? Good, thank you. I just want to get your opinion on uh, CHK, Chesapeake. You know, they had an earnings report because, you know, oil went up and they sort of went down. What's your view on that? So, can I just ask you a question? Do you have a position in it right now? Yes, I do. Okay. So uh, you have a position, and um, are you in the money right now? Uh, a little bit. Okay. I'll tell you what, the reason why I ask is there would be two separate uh, answers I'd give you. The first, the first uh, answer would be uh, relating to, if you said to me, is this a buy or a sell right now? My answer would be because of the weekly chart, which says it's kind of stuck in a trading range for now, it's very difficult to do anything other than to say, I'd rather buy pullbacks. It's at 492 CHK, Chesapeake uh, Energy Corporation, uh, trading down 19 cents, down minus 3.59. Did earnings just come out now? Yeah, they came out, they came out uh, today, you know, and uh, I guess it wasn't that good. Okay. Well, you know what's interesting? For just a few days ago, it was at four dollars and seventy seventy-five cents. So even now, it's up from the other day. Okay, can I? The reason why I wanted to say to you the two different uh, outlooks that I would have one is if you are in the stock, I'd say that if you were able to buy it in the four forty area. I'd be holding it right now, but a part of my position would have a stop, and that stop would probably be around about $5.06 for part of the position, which you might want to put back if it does pull back towards the, uh, the four, uh, 480 to 470 area. Most importantly, you can see that this is a stock that has been in a trading range. It has a huge move up. It went from $1.50 to 576, so that's a four dollar move, a four almost a 400 over 400 percent move. Then it pulls back and it goes to 353. But what does it do? It rallies up to 759, doubles again. This time it doubled. So it has a way of pulling back, and even the little moves that it's had now. So I'm just going to recommend to you, uh, what price are you in at? That's important. Oh, it's about about five dollars, you know, four ninety something average. Okay, you know. so that's a, oh, so you've been building a position for quite a while. Yeah, not that long, but yeah, I got a little small position. Okay, uh -huh. so here's here's my thinking: just a, give it a day or two to settle. Because if the worst that it does is it just pulls back 16, 17, 18 percent, and then it find sort of stabilizes, then what I'd be looking at is a, a, a stock that's tra in a trading range between the 480s and 540s. It could do that. But if the result today is follows through with negative uh, action tomorrow, then I'm going to say to you, you know what? 
be a little bit careful. Don't take a loss. That's the most important thing. I would not take a loss under any circumstances. So my stop on a good part of my position, at least I would make it two-thirds to three-quarters of my position. My, my stop would be a little bit above your average cost. But since you've been averaging in, I might have to have a slightly different attitude. And I might have to say you've sat with it. You have sat with it when it's gone below your, your average price, right? Yes, yes. Okay. So you're really a long-term holder and a believer in this company. If that's, if that's the case, I don't really want to mess with your thinking other than to do a little bit of bookkeeping, a little bit of um, money management. And that's going to say, why not lighten up a little bit and prepare to put that amount back 30 cents lower? That will give you a much better average cost. So I would do this. If tomorrow you can get 5.13 to 5.16 on, say, not even one-third, but just something, take something off, and that's you dedicate to put that back at about 4.85, something like that. And then look what you've done. You've, you've lowered your average cost, and you're handling a stock that seems to have a propensity to trade in a range, and once it gets going, it goes sharply one way, and then pulls back sharply and then restarts that whole process over again. So if it can hold steady in about the 480 to 470 area over the next two weeks, you might find that in, in five weeks' time, it's crept very slowly back to the 520, 545 area. So I, I, as I said, you've been getting into this because you believe in the company. That's a fundamental thing, I think. I don't do fundamentals. I'm just saying my monthly chart is not good but it will improve a lot if this thing can get back to about five, doesn't have to do much, about 565, 570. That'll be a very good action for it. Um, but you might have to wait a little bit. Does that help you? Yes, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you for, for calling. Good luck with the trade. And let me know sometime. So, folks, I have a show in the morning, 11 o'clock till noon. It's called the Tiger Technician's Hour. I'll talk a little bit about that as soon as we get back because I want to do some of these charts tomorrow morning because we will have re the result of the jobs and tomorrow between 11 and 12, we might find beginning a real trend change for next week. I'll be back straight after this break. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. 
Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNM.com. Tom, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Tom O'Brien. Hi, folks. We're back. Basil Chapman sitting here for Tom O'Brien. My, my show tomorrow at 11 o'clock, 11 o'clock till noon every weekday um, is the Tiger Technicians Hour. And I get calls all the time and we go through the different charts and discuss things in terms of the Chapman wave, what we're looking at. And what we've been looking at for a little while now, I'm going to talk about this uh, tomorrow a lot more in the show because we will have some evidence of what's going is the VIX index, the volatility index. For a volatility, in volatility index in the 12.42 area, down 44 cents today, it's really surprising that the Dow struggle, there is there is a, a wave on, of uncertainty out there that is allowing some stocks to move sharply higher, but be cancelled out by so other stocks in the same sector moving down quite sharply. And that's one of the reasons why that rotational aspect is so important. And the VIX index has gone very quickly to a peak ABC. Remember the D? Let me just do this one more time. Uh, show it right here, if I can get it right here. Move that away, move that away, and I'll get it. There it is. Remember, what do we look for in the Chapman wave? The easiest thing, identify the lowest low bar, merely count each successively higher peak, uppercase letters for A, B, C, D. You can go E, F, G. I don't even want to discuss that now. It's when it recycles. Um, but most importantly, add D, other things can happen. Well, lo and behold, we saw that in the VIX index, it went very quickly. The other thing is to do with speed. When you go very quickly from an A to a B to a C to a D, very often you get a pullback. It doesn't mean to say it's a major pullback, but it is a pullback. And in this case, you got that at 14.24 in the volatility index. Now, the volatility index, a lot of people talk about it as a fear and greed index. I agree only to the extent that when it's really screaming to the upside, Side, that's when you get your fear like the August spike to 53, um, August 24th, the China plunge and uh, the bonds, everything, everybody was nervous. And then what happened? You got this spectacular turnaround and the, and the VIX went from a peak D from 53 down to 12.80 and then started a brand new ABC minus failed. The VIX can often fail in the weekly chart at C's. Now what we've got is a very interesting thing. We went very quickly to a D and we've pulled back at 12.42. Let me make it real easy. And I'll be discussing this more in my show. Don't forget, it's a call-in show. For any of what you're looking at, this is the daily, this is the weekly, this is the monthly. Here's the 120-minute chart. I do them all. Um, if, or you're with the Chapman Wave Notation. If you have any questions, you can call me tomorrow and we can go through it in much greater detail. Let me discuss this in, in very stark terms. VIX index tomorrow, if it starts to trade in the 1350s or higher, triple digit down for the Dow, sharp move down in all the indices. If it pulls back and goes under 12.20, there'll be a really strong rally, a counter a, a bounce, strong bounce. Let's go to Sandip uh, in uh, Boston. Hi, how are you? Good, Basil. How are you doing? Haven't spoken to you for a while. Beautiful weather we've got here, huh? I know. It's really, really good weather. Uh, I, I hope we got this all year around, you know? Yeah, I was saying to someone this afternoon, wait, well, wouldn't it be nice if we could somehow bottle this and then we could open that bottle in February just for a day? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I want to talk to you about this UFO. All right? Yes. So let me say this to you. I have a position at 1222, which is about a little less than a month ago. And I was thinking about creating one more position today. Uh, which I didn't. But you, do you think it's a good idea to do that? Okay, I have to do two things. I, I, I'm going to say this to you, even though I know that you know this very well. If your original position was to say that the USO, which is the United States Oil Fund, which was trading at 12, if your original position was to say, 
I love that it's USO. I think oil is going to go higher. I'm going to plan to buy it at 12. I'm going to buy it at 10, and I'm going to buy it at 9. Then I would have said to you, Sandra, that is fantastic action. You just got it, and now you want to see you've got an average cost, and now you've got your plan in place. What you want to see at 9.84 by Tuesday at the latest to get a V-shaped turnaround, you want to see 10.13 to 10.27. That would be fantastic. But if you bought it at 12, thinking it was going to go higher, and now it's gone down 30, uh, three points, that is 20%, uh, now you're in a different position. So now your thinking is, I hope that it goes back because I want to get my money back. That's two situations that are completely diverse. They are separated in your thinking. So I usually uh, recommend... So. So, so let me say this to you. My, I was in your first scenario where I was thinking that, okay, you know, my, because what had happened that about two months ago, I traded in that in between 10.75 and 11.75. Okay. So, and it, it, then I made a buck about, you know, all that. So I was thinking about this, that, okay, all right. Uh, even if I'm buying it 1222, and if I could, if this goes a little bit lower or a lot lower, that's okay. I I can create one more position. That's the scenario I was in. Okay. Now, so now let's go with the scenario that you've just discussed. What you really want to see, because the, the I, I was looking at a chart just a moment ago. Let me just check to see what chart it was. It was a chart of. Uh, now I can't remember. Uh, it had the same pattern in the uh, we oh CHK. I was looking at that, and it was the energy. And I said the monthly chart has got that H formation. It's got you got to be careful because if it breaks down, it's going to retest the low, and the low in the USO will be 767. That is a big move down from your original. So now this is, I can I put this in the starkest terms. Crude oil, to me, I think there's a glut of oil. I could be wrong. Andy does the, the Andy Heck coming up straight after me at 5 o'clock. He does a fantastic review of the oils and, and all the commodities. So my thinking at this particular point is that from everything I've read, from everything I'm looking at, from my, my showing just a moment ago of the, the future Dubai world's tallest building, not that they haven't got one right now, is that the oil-rich countries are overspending like crazy, and they're going to pay a penalty, and crude oil is going to go down, down, down. That's my long-term view. On a shorter term, this is exactly the moment I was going to do it for my subscribers. This morning, we had one try the other day. didn't quite work out. I think it was yesterday or the day before. I was going to do it again today to buy the crude oil uh, ETF. It would have been the two times USO. Instead, I decided to go with a package of gold and crude oil and natural gas for an, a fund that, that has done very nicely today. has the same kind of pattern. I'm going to say to you, you do not want to make it be very strict on this last position. This position, if it takes out today's low of 954, I would start to lighten up. If it goes to 930, I would lighten up again. Why? Because if it goes below the low that was made on the 3rd uh, yesterday at 923, this arch formation in the weekly chart says, you know what, you've got to be careful. Oil could could break the key support of 899. That was the, the low of the week of the 8th of April. It could go quite a bit lower in that H pattern. So you absolutely want in the next two, three days to see this thing climbing nicely. You want to see it get to 10, 13, 10, 27. And then what I'm going to recommend, even though you've tried to package the two together with your 12 entry, and your, your nine something entry, I would say to you, try to make, be very disciplined on this. Oh, can you hold on a second? I want to finish this thought. Can you hold on? Yeah, yeah. we'll be back. And uh, Basil Chapman here, Dow was down a fraction, S&P was up a fraction. We'll talk more about the oil as soon as I get back from this very important break.
Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund is currently offering four-year first mortgages on many of the fully renovated properties that it has purchased. The first mortgages are third-party appraised with a maximum loan-to-value ratio of 70%, providing a secured investment that pays a fixed return of 5% annually, which works out to a monthly income of more than $416 per $100,000 investment with your principal intact and secured. These four-year first mortgages are perfect for anyone looking for a secured investment that provides monthly income much like a CD. For more information, email tigerfund at tfnn.com or click on the Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund banner along the right side of the tfnn.com homepage or call our office directly at 877-518-9190. There's a limited supply, so act now. Join Andy Hecht as he shows you how to make money in commodities. The Commodities Hour, next on TFNN. We're on with Sandy from the, from Boston. So this is what we're looking at here. If the, the, the V-shaped pattern that has to form, if this is going to make a very successful, sharp reversal, and one of the reasons why I've been somewhat negative on the commodities for just a little while, waiting to get back into this ETF that we was this actually it's a fund that we wanted to get back into, which has a whole mix of natural gas, crude oil, um, some of the uh, com other commodities, and gold, which is acting very well, is that we start a position today. It has somewhat of a similar chart pattern here, but I'm treating it as a small position, and I'm treating it as one that I could add to, or I need to see how it tests, if it's going to come back and retest, and that's the same thing here. So I would not i make sure that if it starts to pull back, I'm, I'm ready to lighten up. Maybe you should have a specific number and you say, okay, under 9.48 or 9.30 or something. I just don't want to risk it because I can always put that money back, but I don't want to see it in the eights because now you're looking at a, 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 um, a, a two, two deteriorating positions. That, you know so, what I'm saying? So, so, so this... 984 or whatever tomorrow, uh, I should not create one position or I should create until it goes to 1020? Is that what you're saying? Oh, oh, I thought you said you already added the second position. No, I, I, oh. I haven't. No, I didn't buy the second position. Oh, I, I thought you did. I almost bought that today. 
Okay, I thought you did. If you if you didn't buy it, then I would say I'd add that second position at about. Oh, I hope it doesn't pop up tomorrow. I hope it's just a little bit of a pullback for you at uh, under 980, and I'd have a small position. But that position I would only add to on strength. I don't want to add to on weakness. You you understand what I'm saying, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I want to see the USO and crude oil trading much higher by Tuesday. I want to see a V-shaped recovery. And USO, the United States Oil Fund, needs to fill the gap between 10.23 and 10, uh, no, 10.11. And what was the high there? Yeah, 10.23 and 10.30. That's That must be the target by about Tuesday or Wednesday. That'll be fabulous action. If I can't do that, it's going to stall. Hope that helps you. Okay, thank you very much, Basil. Thank you very much for calling. So, folks, before we run out of time, there are a couple of things that I want you to do. One is I want you to discuss just in terms of what I'm looking at for tomorrow's action, but what tomorrow's action is going to lead to for next week, if I'm correct. And then make it real simple. Let's go to the back to the VIX index, dollar V-I-X dot X. And that is an index most of you should have in your platform somewhere. It's the VIX index, and it's based on the CBO volatility index. And it's a, a complex way of, of, of calculating. I don't really care about that. I only care about the numbers. And in the below the 13 area, in the t 12s, there should be a rally. If there isn't a rally, something weird is going on. And then today, something didn't happen. I think there's pressure because there's nervousness about tomorrow. And the Bank of England should have spurred a rally. So this is going to be very important. If there is a move down tomorrow of about 70 to 100 points in the Dow, 10 to 12 points in the S&P, and by tomorrow's close, we are down sharply, we have got in place some kind of a short-term sell signal that says we will have a weak week next week. And you've got to be very careful. On the other hand, I, I, there's just enough strength here to say that if we can ameliorate any selling early and you have a spike to the upside, and for whatever reason, whatever the number is, I don't care. It's, the, it's how the market responds to numbers, not the number. It's how it responds. If the Dow, I go to the Dow right now, dollar, I-N-D-U, if the dollar spikes up and is able to be up 80 to 100 points at the close tomorrow, we should have a very nice rally into next week. It doesn't have to be very strong, but a rally that finally maybe will include General Electric, United Technologies, some of the big Dow stocks, maybe even the oil stocks start to move higher. Those are the parameters that I'd be looking for. Hope that helps you. To stay. Tune into my show tomorrow at 11 o'clock Eastern Time, and we'll go through this in even greater detail. Thanks for being here. Have a wonderful day. Stay tuned for Andy Hecht. I'll be back.